Hello everybody and welcome to today's daily devotional where we concentrate on a time of prayer. Now generally my prayer time is quiet. It's a time where I um, am speaking to God, I'm reflecting upon God, I'm praying to God. But Often I might at the beginning actually put on a praise song, a song that is exalting and glorifying God. Uh, I feel like I need the noise, um, the exaltation, the praise of God to help my spirit. Other times I feel like I need that quiet meditation of music, that worship awe, but it sometimes takes me a while to get there. So I might have this loud praiseworthy song and it, as my spirit winds down and settles in talking to God, praying, I get then to that spot of awe. So it's my quiet time. Um, he's my Lord, he's my saviour, he's my friend. But it's often different every time. Not from God's perspective, because he's the same yesterday, today and forever. From me, I'm different. I'm emotionally in a different place. I can be in a different mood. I can ha be struggling. I can be um, happy, sad. You know, like the emotions can affect how I pray. Um, so I'm different, but I sometimes can feel like I'm in a hard place. I'm in a dry place of, of prayer. It's just not happening for me. It can feel a bit boring, a bit mundane, a bit repetitive. But God still desires us to try and come and share with him. Tell him you're bored. Tell him you're, it feels mundane and repetitive and dry. Because it doesn't matter where you are. God is still wanting to be with us, to sh our, for us to share our lives with him. So he always wants to share his life with us. But we often can put God in a box. Well, God's like this, you know. I feel like um, many people think the God of the Old Testament is the judge and the serious, you know, man with the beard, white beard and he's wise but no, very standoffish. And then the God of the New Testament um, displayed by Jesus is loving and kind and compassionate. But he hasn't changed. The, all the um, things, characters, um, characteristics that Jesus displays comes from the Father and God had in the Old Testament as well. It just often the writers think about it the writers are writing their opinion sometimes their perspective holy spirit breathe but their perspective so they can put their flavor on it their culture into it they share about god the father so the father figure was very often away from the rest of the family he was honored and respected but wasn't like hey dad Whereas Jesus comes along and says, why don't you share? Why don't you pray to the father and call him Abba Father, Dad, Daddy? More, more, it's like intimate. But God has always been an intimate God. He walked in the garden with us in the, in the, the book of Genesis and it was an intimate relationship with Adam and Eve. That's the same God, the same desire he has for us. So sad to say we put God in a box. We, we often feel like the God of the Old Testament was, like I said, very judgmental, was not merciful. But I'm going to share with you today some beautiful scriptures and they're all from the Old Testament where it talks about the mercy of God and God's mercy was ultimately demonstrated with Jesus dying on the cross for us. The Father sent his Son out of love, out of compassion and mercy for us because he desired more than anything is we would have an intimate relationship with him. And he, he knew that we couldn't do it. It would be only the sacrifice of his Son that would ultimately get us back into that relationship, that holy relationship 
that purity that we are all drawn to, who is God. So in the Old Testament, it talks about the mercy of God, the compassion, the love. It, like, how do you describe mercy? It's like love, compassion and grace all encapsulated into this word. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 31, it states this. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors, which he confirmed to them by oath. God made a covenant with our ancestors, with the people who've gone before us. He's made a covenant. And if he's made a covenant, then he doesn't forget it. That covenant lasts from generation to generation to generation. It's passed down this blessing because it's an agreement. It's a blessing of God, really a promise from God that he would be our God and that we would be his people, that he would care for us, that he would be merciful to us. Then in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 17, it states this. And none of the condemned things will be found in his hands. The Lord will turn from his fierce anger, will show you mercy and will have compassion on you. He will increase your numbers as he promised on oath to your ancestors. So he's stating the same thing. I promised to Abraham that he would be the father of a great nation and that there would be you know, many heirs. Well, that story hasn't stopped. He promised that his mercy would come. He would show compassion and he would increase our numbers. God will do the same. In Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 31. But in your great mercy, you did not put an end to them or abandon them. For you are a gracious and merciful God. When you read the Old Testament, the people of God who um, loved God and were intimate with him and everything went well and the blessings were there. And then they abandoned God at times and rejected God, didn't have that intimate relationship with him. So therefore the blessings which were still there weren't available because they didn't receive them. They didn't accept them. And it said, God, God put aside his anger. God put aside how he felt in, in being rejected. And in his great mercy, he didn't abandon us. He is gracious and merciful. So you, do you get a picture? Our God in the Old Testament is a loving, merciful God, just as much as in the New Testament as portrayed by Jesus. Then we also have in Psalm 25, verse 6. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. So David's reminding the Lord, from of old you have great mercy and love. Remember this. So in prayer, when we have needs, when we're talking to him, why don't we state, Lord God, remember your mercy that you have promised to us from of old you were, were like this you still are this and you are like this into the future you are oh god i ask for your mercy and you might think well, why do i need mercy don't we need mercy every day when we're not doing well we need god's mercy when we're not even achieving much we need god's mercy to help us when we're even doing great and we feel like we're on track and we're ticking all the boxes do we not still need God's mercy and graciousness to help us continue, but to even do more? And in Micah chapter 7, verse 18, it states this. Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever but delight to show mercy. He delights to show mercy to us. 
often we feel like we're remnants. Sometimes we feel like there's not many of us anymore. There needs to be more Christians in the world. There needs to be more followers of Christ. In many ways, that's our mission to love our God and to draw others to himself so they become followers of Jesus Christ. But we need to remember it's God's mercy that has done this. It's God's continuous love that has done this. He, what does it say? And again, it's in the Old Testament, Lamentations, verse, um, chapter 3, verse 22. His mercies are new every morning. I don't know about you, but I know I need his mercies every morning. So let us now have a time where we ask our merciful God to come and be with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. O loving Father, O merciful God, you tell us that your promises last, that your covenant, your agreement with people of old is still the agreement today. And we ask you to be merciful and put aside you know, our wrongdoings, put aside where we've failed, where we're frail. We call upon your mercy, O oh God, and we ask you to come and be with us right now in the world today. We need you, Lord. There are so many wars that have, that have just started just recently. We need you, Lord. We need peace. We need harmony, we need love, we need forgiveness. Lord, we call upon your mercy so that we can, you know, courageously put aside again our, our iniquities, our sins, our failings. And we can stand on the righteousness of you. And we can do what you've asked us to do, Lord. It is... We need courage, we need your grace, we need your mercy to do what you've called us to do, us personally to do. Holy Spirit, come and fill us more with your courage and strength, with your grace, so that we can in our own work situations, in our family situations, in our neighborhoods, we can be Christ to people we meet. That we can love and not just love our friends, but love our enemies too. That we can show the world who Jesus is, who following Jesus, what he does for us. It changes our life. We live life differently. We have different attitudes and different hearts because of what Jesus has done. So this day, we call upon your mercy. We place before you our own private petitions. We place them at your throne and we walk away, leaving them at your feet, knowing that you hear them, you see us, you see the situations, and that you will come in your timing and in your will. We thank you, Lord that you have loved us, that you are a merciful God. And we ask all of this for your glory in the name of the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day and know that the mercy of God is so abundant, has never not existed. It's part of him. And let's call upon his grace and mercy so that we can live lives that we're meant to live. Your blessings today will be abundant because of your merciful God.